So my talk this afternoon is on Java performance testing and diagnostics, and that's using three open source tools. So JMeter, Visual VM, and Eclipse Memory Analyzer. And basically, they're there to avoid this sort of thing happening, like, you know, things sort of like getting so maxed out that they grind to a halt and nasty things happen on the server. So the reason we need performance testing, so the first thing is you can test an application under heavy load where you wouldn't normally be able to do this manually. So you can like automate firing lots of requests at an application in a very short amount of time, which wouldn't be possible to do if it, even if you had like the whole team on like all the different browsers trying to fire commands at it at the same time. And that lets you track down any bugs and issues that might happen, but only when your application is maxed out under heavy load. And you can also work out the point at which your application starts to misbehave. So you can find that load where things start to break down under stress. And also to make sure that your application fails gracefully when that happens and doesn't start doing horrendous things like totally bombing out and crashing the server. And it recovers gracefully when the load is reduced. And then if you're making changes that might affect performance and performance is critical, then you can benchmark the, you know, the number of requests per second before your changes and after your changes to make sure that you've not regressed the performance by doing your change. And uh, the next, the first application that I'm going to demonstrate soon is JMeter. And that's... Um, you can download that from the Apache website, and it's an open source performance testing tool written in Java. So it's great for testing web apps, but you can also test all sorts of other sort of applications as well. You can even do like JDBC commands from it, and FTP, and all sorts of stuff like that. So it's really comprehensive and configurable, and it probably does more things than you ever actually need. So we only tend to use like a subset of it for firing off web requests. And it's great for you know setting up lots of different concurrent threads that all run at the same time, so you can like really max out the server. And then the second tool is Visual VM, and that monitors the JVM, and you can run it locally, or you can actually connect to a remote JVM like via a SOX proxy, or like a JMX connector, and that will give you real-time monitoring of how much CPU the JVM is using, how much memory, and how many classes are loaded, and how many threads are executing. And then you can also run a sampler and a profiler, and that will tell you which bits of the Java code are taking the most CPU time. So if you find that you know most of the CPU time is in a particular method, then that will normally point to that method having the performance bottleneck that you need to fix. And you can also use it to generate a thread dump, which will give you details of what all the threads in the application are doing at a particular moment in time. So if you've got things like endless loops, that will track those down. And you can do a heap dump, that will tell you how the memory is being used on the JVM to track down memory leaks. And you can like do snapshots of those things at a given moment in time. So you can like fire up um, JMeter to really max out the application, and while it's maxed, you can do a thread dump and a heap dump. And that can then be used to like track down performance issues as well. <laughs> and then finally, the Eclipse Memory Analyzer tool is another free open source tool you can download. And once you've got your heap dump of the memory in your application, you can open that in Eclipse Memory Analyzer, and that'll give you lots of graphs as to you know which classes are taking most of the memory up. And that's brilliant for tracking down memory leaks. The only thing to bear in mind is if you're doing that against like a live server where the JVM is using several gigabytes, it can be a complete nightmare to load some of these massive heap dumps, like eight gigabyte heap, heap dumps. So on my old Mac, it completely crashed the Mac trying to load a heap dump from something like Preview, I think it was at the time. But this new Mac that's got twice the memory, that, that would be a lot better for it. And there's different ways of getting heap dump. You can either add um, like a JVM switch, which will automatically do a heap dump when the JVM runs out of memory. 
or you can use the command line tool jmap to trigger a heap dump. And then finally, probably the easiest way to do it is to just to fire it from <coughs> and So now we come on to the cool bit, the live demo. So I'm going to restart it, so we're doing it from fresh. So I just click on the Tomcat to connect to it. And then as you can see, that that's what the JVM is doing at the moment. So you've got uh, the garbage collector, you've got the amount of heat memory being used, you've got how many classes are loaded, and how many threads are running. And this is JMeter, so I can kick that off. And the aggregate report, I'll just clear that down. Restart that from the top. So that's being updated to show you how many samples have been taken, like different statistics about how long each request is taking, how many K per second. And going back to Visual VM, you can see that the memory's gone up an awful lot and it's doing quite a few garbage collections and it's starting up more threads, loading more classes. So that's showing that it's getting a lot more maxed out than it was before. And then you can analyse what each thread is doing in the application in real time as well. And if I go onto the sampler, I can do CPU sampling, and that's showing <coughs> which um, classes and methods are taking the most time. And um, the good thing is that most of the time is being taken up by Tomcat, the HTTP connector, and things like <coughs> the, uh, the task polling on the threads. So that's <coughs> cool. It means that you know most of What's happening is just Tomcat doing its thing, processing requests, rather than it actually being in the application code. And then you've also got like Spring Framework, Time Leaf, and stuff. And because this is like in dev, we've not got the Time Leaf caching turned on. So that means that every time it's requesting a page, it's actually executing the Time Leaf as well. And if I want to take a heat dump, I can just um, just yeah, I can just do applications and then heat dump, and I'll do a heat dump, and that'll show you which classes are taking up the most memory as well. And then finally, there's the Eclipse memory analyzer, and this is one that I prepared earlier this morning. So that gives you, by default, you've got like a list of the biggest objects in the JVM. So there's nothing too massive here because this is just like running locally. So you've got like a spring factory, a time leaf cache, the main class loader for Tomcat, and then everything else. And then you've got reports like leak suspects. That's where it, you know, if there's any memory leaks, where the most likely places for that are. And um, so that's just got the class loader, which is cool. And like lots of instances of class. So that's just like what you'd expect to see normally, rather than, you know, finding like there's like an object in the application that's like leaking lots of memory. Because you've got like the EH cache normally takes up a big part of that graph as well. So those are like that's like a whistle stop tour of those three tools and how you might use them. So like track down problems with performance and memory leaks and, and that sort of thing. <coughs> Thank so, you. It's all right. Any questions on that? Thank you for squeezing that into fifteen minutes. Cool. Thank you.